Good evening, everyone. I'm much delighted to offer a hearty welcome to all people gathered here to attend the guest lecture on researchable issues and advances in NRM by eminent scientist Dr. A. Well Murugan, Assistant Director General, Soil and Water Management, ICI, New Delhi. Now I would like to request Dr. N. Senthil, Dean School of Postgraduate Studies, for presenting the inaugural address. Good evening to all. I'm really it's a happy moment that one of our alumni occupy the highest position in ICR, Assistant Director General, Soil Water Management, NRM, ICR New Delhi. I'm really happy and welcoming you for this evening lecture. Uh, we can call it as interactive session for with the master's and PhD student. Uh, I welcome Dr. B. Bala Subramanian, Director, Natural Resource Management, and Professor and Head Dr. R. Santi, Soil Science and Agriculture Chemistry. As Madam Vice Chancellor is be busy schedule, she could not able to come. So, on behalf of Tamil Nadu Agriculture University, I welcome Dr. Vel Murugan for this evening lecture. This lecture is arranged by Indian Society of Soil Science, Coimbatore chapter. They are keen in uh, welcoming our, our assistant director general, since uh, he is the alumni of uh, Tamil Nadu Agriculture University and also is my junior in the Agriculture College and Research Institute, Madurai. Uh, so we are really happy that you, the alma mater, come to here and uh, share his experience, uh, his large experience in the and uh, different walks in soil science and natural resource management. Uh, I'm really uh, thankful to the uh, professor and head and director for organizing this wonderful evening lecture because always soil science and agriculture chemistry always respond whatever things which Dean PGS request and they whenever the speakers come they try to accommodate and try to arrange the lectures because the Tamil Nadu Agriculture University want every experts visiting TNAU to make the interaction with the students because they are the new generation of soil scientists and they should know the experience of the old old generation, but not well Morgan is not old generation. He's he is a currently is an active soil scientist and natural resource management person. And he walks uh, different uh, different areas in India, starting from Port Flair to Delhi uh, because he served very hard environment and also now in the capital. So his experience always help you to uh, know about how the soil science across India. So with this, I welcome one and all for this evening lecture. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Thank you. On this occasion, we are extremely happy to have with us an eminent scientist, Dr. A. Vail Murugan, as our chief guest. Sir, you hardly need any introduction. Your contribution to the soil community speaks for your numerous capacities. Now, I invite Dr. P. Balasubramanyam, Director NRM, to give a brief introduction about our esteemed chief guest. The most respected uh, uh, chief guest of this today's function, uh, that is evening uh, lecture. Director of Session, uh, Dr. Vel Murugan. Dean Sp School of Postgraduate Studies, who was uh, always kind enough to support our directorate for any uh, aspects which we request him, he will immediately uh, give his hand. And uh, especially he has uh, sanctioned 9.9 uh, uh, lakhs uh, for the establishment of the Center of uh, Centralized Instrumentation Facilities. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Doctor. And uh, head of the department, madam, really madam is very active and uh, makes the department viable and live in all aspects and make the every uh, moment uh, lively in the department, whether it is external experts coming to our university and our di director and department, madam will take responsibility to interact with the students always. So thank you, madam. And uh, I have, uh, want to introduce uh, my uh, good friend, uh, friend dr vel murugan actually we i we i was introduced to him as a student i was a student of him when i was undergoing a training in that the indian institute of remote sensing daradun for two and a half months that is national natural resource management training that uh, he was my guide uh, for uh, complete my training programs in 2006 so from that day onwards, we were have a, a contact regularly. He was after that he was resigned the uh, in a, that is uh, ISRO, and he joined in ICR as a, as a principal scientist, and he has worked at the um, uh, boat player on the and Nicobar Islands. So just uh, um, uh, want to give a brief introduction of the speaker today, 
டாக்டர் வேல்முருகன் இஸ் அசிஸ்டன்ட் டைரக்டர் ஜெனரல் சாயில் அண்ட் வாட்டர் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் ஐசிஆர் கிஷி பவன் நியூ டெல்லி ஹி ஹஸ் கம்ப்ளீட்டட் ஹிஸ் பிஎஸ்சி அக்ரிகல்ச்சர் அட் அக்ரிகல்ச்சர் காலேஜ் அண்ட் ரிசர்ச் இன்ஸ்டியூட் மதுரை டூரிங் த இயர் நைன்டீன் எயிட்டி எயிட் டூ நைன்டி டூ and subsequently he joined the iari new delhi for his post graduate program that is msc ag in 93 to 95 in soil science and agriculture chemistry and in 96 to 2000 he continued his phd in soil science and agriculture chemistry at iari new delhi he had a post doctoral experience with dr latan lal ohia state university united states of america he had an experience of uh, uh, as a scientist at the indian institute of remote sensing dehradun and worked for 6 years later he joined the indian council of agriculture research in 19 2009 as a senior scientist at icr central island agriculture research institute port blair joined and later on in 2022 he joined as the ed assistant director general soil and water management the major contributions of dr evel murugan are assessment and management of land degradation and water resources organic waste recycling utilization of bio resources and the seeds plant growth promotion agro ecosystem monitoring and climate change and site specific integrated farming system he has a standardized and demonstrated raised bed system paired bed system farm pond with border dikes and rice fish system in a 210 farmers field covering 208 acres in tsunami affected land besides popular thing salinity salinity tolerant varieties covering 50 hectares of land these landscaping methods are included in the state plan and uh, pratham mandri krishi sanjeev yojana he has involved in development of homestead based uh, ifs model in 36 tribal tablets and the uh, uh, tablets at a uh, core nicobar benefiting 200 tribal farmers he also involved in developing development and designing of bio consortia bio stimulant solar dryer and biomass spray dryer he served as a chairman of the pkvy Uh, committee that ensured the declaration of andaman and dikopar island as organic under large area certification program by the ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare government of india besides consultant for pradhan mandri kishi sanjeev yojana and state specific action plan on water resources for andaman nikopar islands he has guided several pg diploma msc and phd students he has published more than 100 research publications with citations of more than 1000 published around 5 books by international springer elsewhere and national publishers his contribution to the island agriculture and natural resource management is well recognized by icr and andaman islands administration he received rajendra prasad prashakar award for best technical publication in hindi Fakhruddin Ali Ahmed Award for Tribal Farming System in 2017 and LG and Commendation Certificate for Island Agriculture in 2016. With this uh, few um, introduction, he has a lot of uh, experience and other things. I think uh, we all are uh, going to have his uh, evening lecture. Uh, we will have good knowledge. Thank you very much. Moving on the most awaited section of this event, I am highly honored and feel privileged to invite our guest of honor, Dr. A. Well Murugan. ADG Soil and Water Management ICR New Delhi Thank you thank you so much for your uh, warm welcome love and affection to one of your alumni uh, I thank you very much to Madam Geeta Lakshmi uh, Dr Shantil Dr Bala Subramanian Madam Shanti and uh, all my colleagues uh, scientific colleagues my classmates here and all students friends a very good afternoon uh, indeed I am very delighted and happy to meet you um, so after going to delhi my job is uh, not to do any research only thing is to go and talk and see people what is there in mind because uh, i am one of the most eligible person to do this job that's what my secretary also told because i was there in uh, andaman nicobar islands for 13 years Uh, people used to say if i say i am there for 13 years people will be wondering how you are staying there so i used to say that i don't remember that the day when i joined there in uh, 2009 and uh, 13 years have passed because one thing is when you look into your job if you don't get involved suddenly you will count your days so that's what going to happen whether you stay in kaimutu or whether you stay in uh, any part of the world or remote area it doesn't matter until otherwise you get involved into your job so job satisfaction is one of the most important thing first i say to everyone 
in a, even in university also you may be a teacher you may be a researcher you take this as a challenge so once this challenge is thrown to you your your personality should come out so that is what i i request and i have learned from this uh, one of this very best institute tnau and also iri i am alumni of iri uh, there are one two incidents i just quote for your information then i move into the subject that is given i am not going to give you elaborate lecture on what is soil and what is agronomy you have very qualified teacher we have very qualified uh, uh, dean and directors are there uh, just we will discuss something of, uh, i will share with my experience uh, which which may be benefit to your students uh, when i look back my own career how i have come and how i walked throughout my life uh, that's very interesting only point i will share you after finishing my tnio uh, bs agriculture i am average students madam is my first teacher dr shanti uh, irene vaymadi is my teacher dr sendil is my senior sarmila is my classmate so we have wonder madam is my senior so all all my batchmates seniors are there so i am very average students i am not very brilliant but when i was studying in tamil medium in school i was the school topper in tamil medium i was the school topper but when i enter into the agriculture at that time only english was the medium so i was not so brilliant student so i have to rely on uh, two three of my friends to get the notes including sharmila so we get the notes and study so this is how I, i started my career but at the end of the day when we were close to 3.4 and 3.5 we often meet with uh, dr sendil's room sir how to improve this so he is one of our advisor he and dr uh, shanmo sundaram they used to say very brilliant uh, thinking they have uh, they used to ask me this chemistry course you will get b you be happy with that this biochemistry course you get c don't go d and fail c and above okay sir that's fine then entomology is always boring you take this course so first one what do how to get you concentrate on extension you concentrate on economics so soil science uh, this course okay thuraj uh, mudya you are b only confirmed then biology sir is there a uh, 3 plus 2 course you concentrate so this is the question so they they actually it was funny we discuss but the wonderful thing happened is they as a senior they have advised us how to concentrate on the one which you can score because at the end of the day your ogb accounts so i am not able to score in uh, biochemistry i was not able to score in uh, pest of field crops but there are courses you can concentrate you never miss it economics you certainly you will get because studying in tamil english doesn't make any difference for extension and economic just you got to put in the words similarly for economic botany if you are studying same for soil survey you it is you are coming across every day it's like uh, water management agronomy some of the agronomy course what you are going to do so you concentrate so you write he used to say if you don't write also immaterial you write is was whatever you know you write and come back that fellow subramani is there he will give you mark this was some of the advice they have given me still i remember because uh, i know how i will improved first 2.75 then 3 then 3 to 1 so very slowly slowly we built up at the end of the day we i i reached the something around 3.475 that could all because of my seniors advice because why i say proudly is uh, similarly i cannot forget madam also my classmates also because how they helped lot of friends is the institution the institution of tnau the good friends and the good senior and the good teacher this is the way to success so this is what uh, what i am today because uh, after finishing uh, just our age students i i took my genetics i got my jr fellowship but unfortunately i turned to soil science then i decided okay i'll go to iri uh, because tnu there is no chance to get the seat because at that time the rule was you cannot study in the same institutes so i have forced to go outside forcefully i went then i went to kau studied for one year again i have to get decision we'll go to delhi i want to improve my career immaterial i last one year no problem so i went uh, for six month i was study after studying studying all the books uh, then only i started studying soil science so whatever madam and all my teachers i given i studied properly for the six month i spent then i went to new delhi only two seats were there one general one for reservation so i got that one seat so during the interview 
um, there you have to for MSc, you have a write up, then you have interview also. So after the interview, the last question Dr. Renan goes for me, he asked it, who was your teacher? After putting a practical question, who was your teacher? I told, okay, this was there. Okay, I was selected, then I joined. Then I finished it, then uh, all my work were there. Then I went to US for my postdoc also. Um, so Dr. Ratan Lalwai, my chair, he is a Nobel laureate uh, for writing IPCC uh, book. Then also he was a World Food Prize winner. Very brilliant person. Unfortunately, he was not given a seat in uni Indian University. He was a dropout from IRI. He joined there uh, in US. He went there as an RA. Then he was became a professor of US State University, one of the uh, most noted and natural resource management scientists in the world now, um, climate scientist. So after a few days, 10 to 15 days, he called me one day. Uh, then he called me, Velu. Velu, you are from my land. Can you give me a lecture? I was shell socked. I thought, how I will give you a lecture, sir? You're my professor, not to me, for the students. So faculty, we used to give one day, every day, every month lecture, you give this time because Island is new to them. I was surprised, sir, how I can give to American OU State University suddenly within uh, 15 days, you are, I need a time. No, 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 you can give, you come. Then sir, you will sitting in the days. Yes, then I agreed. Okay, let us see. Then uh, at the end of the, my lecture, the vice chancellor of OU State University, just after introduction, he called me, who was your teacher? So in two occasions, uh, my teacher's name was raised by very eminent persons. Why I want to say and share you uh, some of the things happened in my life is because the, within you, there are three persons always will be there. One, your mother or father will be there. Second, your teacher will be there. And third, your friends will be there. Friends, maybe junior, senior, somebody will be there. So these three people, they'll be shaping you. So you you will discover at, at maybe after some part of time when you your success knocks or when you fail. So when you wake up after your failure, I face a lot of failure uh, during this selection. Also before these two selections, when I, before I became my student director general, uh, I was attending joint secretary interview uh, for agriculture. So my interview was very fine. And finally, the chairman told uh, Dr. Velu, you prepared, I think. I told you, a few I am appearing for a joint secretary interview. How I will come without preparation? That's fine, but you are from a remote location. It is uh, how we will manage it in uh, uh, this, this location. Then I was self-shocked. How you will say that I am from remote location? So it is also part of Indian territory. So no, 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 I, they send me out that uh, giving me 58 marks. Selection is for 61. So internally, they have reduced me the mark. But uh, fortunately, after two months, so I was selected as assistant director general. Uh, nobody goes to the agriculture minister for briefing. So some of the question nano fertilizers, I have to go. And I went there and I was sitting in there. They were expecting I could not speak Hindi. So I, I, they were pushing me close to the minister. I was sitting third, third from the minister and all these people were sitting. The discussion was there for uh, how India should take addition on nano fertilizer and what is its effect on the crop. So government ought to take a call how you will reduce the fertilizer subsidy. That was a question uh, minister has to answer in the parliament. So we have to brief it. Mm, then uh, suddenly one, two, three, then he asked who is there from ICR. Then I have to, I, I was there, sir. Then he told, asked so many scientific questions in Hindi we have answered. Um, then he told, okay, satisfied. After before going, he asked me tomorrow morning, you come to my house for briefing. Once again, I want to discuss. So next day I went there to my shock. The fellow who interviewed me, he was sitting as an officer in charge. So he told Saab Bularai of Kandar. So I went inside, I had a tea with the minister. Then I have to appraise him. So this is what you ought to answer in the parliament. He happy. Then I was sitting in the gallery. He went and answered in the parliament. Now also you can check in the parliamentary question. None of the answer is there. Only I told only four, four lines. He was very happy. So why I'm saying, the same fellow who interviewed me and rejected that you are unfit for a, a New Delhi post, he was just opening the door and he told me, Saab is Bula Rayapka. So that confidence gives you when you are, uh, yourself is acquainted with the science. So science will never go out of you. So what you learn, what you 
uh, what you are, your personality will remain always with you. That is what my message, first message to you. Uh, you have a good friends, you have a good surrounding, and uh, you have a good parents. You are lucky. Your life will go on. Whether you fall or rise in material, that will remain with you. So that is what the science always tells us. Everybody's life is like this only. You just if you remember, it will be there. So I owe my success to this institution in major part of my success. Uh, particularly the way I was built. That is very, very important. You may fail, you may succeed, but the, you are built up and make up is very, very important. That is what the institution has to provide. So I am fortunate to study here and I was fortunate to have a studied good institution and all good surrounding. That's what very, very important for you. So I, I my only and uh, important suggestion to all the students is have a good friends, have a good teacher, have your time and fun with this institution. Enjoy your life, but have a target done the next day. Just the next day, what you have to do. Only this much plan you have to do, you will enjoy and you will grow up in life. Otherwise, we study, 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 study always. We blame the teacher. We blame the institution. We blame the political system. It is not going to help us. Never it is going to help us. Rather, you will waste your time, energy, mindset. Everything will go. You, you will never become positive. Be a positive. If you are, this is the institution, this institution has seen uh, very great people. Not only I am very simple. There are a lot of administrators this institution has produced. There are a lot of uh, uh, scientists this institution has produced. I have seen in USA also. When I go around, uh, there are some code words are there in uh, this one. Uh, after a very hectic schedule, I went to a big shop. Uh, then I, I was just scratching my head uh, what is this life very boring so i i came here in this very cold then if i use this word suddenly in the next fellow he told sir are you from tamil nadu he asked it how you discovered sir just now my husband is telling the same he, he every day he used to tell at least 10 times my life i am get bored of my life this is the one word i used in tamil that that lady came to me and asked sir are you from tamil nadu tna how did you identify my husband used to tell for every day 10 times at least this word i am listening so we have become a very good friend uh, in usa when i was there so why i am telling is the things which always come with you is your identity second thing is your identity how you want to be identified whether you want to be identified as a student of one institution or just you are uh, addressless. So this you have to decide. So you built your relationship with the institution that you are studying with your friends, whatever you are, whether you succeed or fail, wherever you go. This identity is very, very important. If you don't understand, you just ask any Sri Lankan. They will tell, they will cry. You have a land. You have a university, your own university. You study. I say, uh, yes, I am from Tamil Nadu Girls University student. I will say and go and say everywhere in the whole world. I will say, yes, I am a student and alumni of this. But you ask Sri Lankan, you ask some somebody from Israel. You feel it, then you will understand what is the opportunities you have. So you have already identity, maybe whatever, wherever universities you study in India, you will have identity of that institution. So whatever already built up in the university that you will be carrying. You go USA, you go London, you go Australia. I have gone through all these institutions in Frankfurt. I was talking in English. People were only Germans. So they were able to understand what I express. Why I'm telling your identity is also very important. So uh, when a lot of people have contributed for the institution building that you are carrying with you when you get this just a degree. It is not a degree. It is not a paper. You are carrying the identity, the built up um, 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 what you call legendary of that institution you are carrying so that you have to contribute it back so i feel that it's our time to give it back of course dr sendil and subramani they got a good chance to contribute back to the institution i didn't get a chance because uh, where i am joined it is my eighth job in my life thinking that i will come to tamil nadu i appear interview after interview after interview whenever i get selected i posted north and north and ultimately i thought i don't want to go to china or somewhere so let us settle stop here so usd also i got one interview i didn't appear otherwise i should have landed in csiro in uh, australia so that's what my life is uh, it's your opportunities you take it uh, so wherever you go you learn so this is what you have to, as a students, you have to first, you have to learn. Don't expect that I will study, I'll come back to this institution, I will go only this job, never make it. Only you built yourself. 
So let us live take it wherever it goes. You go along with this. You will see the success. So this is what my uh, simple message to you, my experience and uh, my thanks to these institutes uh, that given me a very good opportunity, then built my career, particularly myself, because why I'm saying all these things before I before come to this lecture lecture, you will listen to anybody. Anybody you can a lot of teachers are there. They are good enough, better than me uh, to give you. Uh, there are my seniors. They are better than me to guide you. But my experience I am sharing openly. It's an opportunity uh, for me also to give you uh, how the things comes. Um, because. Always you think that when you succeed in your life. Immaterial in the world, you, you are being interested to the world. OK, so after your BSc, after your MSc or PhD, when you get a job, you get introduced to the world. But when you fail, you will see that. The world is introduced to you, so that's what simple life. So when you succeed, you in, you get introduced to the world. But in, when you fail, and the world is get introduced to you, you will understand the real life. So how difficult and how you have to manage. So this educational institution, uh, whether you are wherever you study, built yourself as a personality, not your degree. Your degree is not going to help you. Degree is only a, I tell you, it is one identity. That's all. But how you built yourself your personality that is very 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 important because a lot of ups and downs you'll be facing in your life and similarly keep open for signs keep some day for your friends keep some day for your neighbors that is also very important so there is nothing comes with you uh, when we go from this world only two things will come and if you are a good teacher you will give somebody education so that will remain forever and second thing, if you are affectionate to your neighbors, that affection will remain. This is the two things will remain forever in the life. One is affection, another is education or science. Nothing will remain, nothing will say your name. So this is what my simple, uh, from my experience, what I have learned, and this is what you have to carry my request as your elder. You consider me as your elder and alumni, that's all. A simple thing. So this, this should be there in your mind forever, okay? Uh, this is what I want to share with you um, and this occasion. Thank you very much for providing this. And now I come uh, come to the subject of uh, natural resource management, uh, being a student director general for ICR uh, for natural resource management. Uh, I supervise activities of uh, soil, water, climate or other related uh, subject uh, and other whatever it is unfilled in ICR. I used to see. Uh, all these activities, research activities. We have uh, 18 institution under ICR natural resource management um, that we, we will look after all these activities, research activities. But uh, at, at your academic level, uh, this natural resource management also includes soil, water, climate, your agroforestry, agronomy and soil microbiology, in fact. And finally, all these put together, maybe different different subject you are seeing. But here it, it may be surprising to many of you why I am telling all these subjects which are available in a separate department. But when you are studying as a textbook, as students, you have to study separate, separate things. But at the end of your PhD program, you are a science student, agriculture student. OK, so you, you will go carry an agro ecosystem. So we look after agro ecosystem also. And there are different tools are there for NRM research to carry out. Uh, particularly, you have biotechnology. Sir so may be wondering why I am touching biotechnology. So biotechnology is not a subject. It's a tool it, because it has come out with uh, different tools which can be applied to everywhere. Soil, you take biotechnology, you can use. Plant science, you can use it. Don't worry. Biotechnology can be applied to statistics also. You will wonder. Biotechnology gives feed to the computer science that give way to your uh, bioinformatics. So, so every subject is like this. Once the subject grows, any 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 theme or subject grows, it will branch it out. Then it will find the link with the other subject. One example I have told biotechnology. Similarly for geographic information system, when it was developed, it developed out of uh, geography. Then it is when the computer and the computing ability came, then they call it GIS. Now entire globe Google is run after GIS only. So now GIS, you are using one of the tool as in soil studies, remote sensing basic uh, layer is built over GIS. 
you take any distribution now it has become population distribution uh, any nutrient use crop distribution crop diversity all is built on your geographical distribution that is georeference one once the moment you say georeference it is a geographical information system layer will be there above which you will build every layer either it is soil nutrient water or climate everything can be built over gis similarly you take any 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 other subject like statistics once it is a separate discipline it is a branch out of mathematics so once the statistics grow in its strength and able to solve several problem then every subject took the statistics now statistics itself is not a subject now because everybody knows it your own field you know it if you, if you take uh, uh, crop genetics genetics you have separate statistics have come you take soil science separate programs have come separate uh, methodology have come similarly you take ecosystem studies your statistics is there so why i want to stress is any subject if it is not able to solve the problem if it is not able to see the challenge it is not a subject at all it is not a subject at all it is just art art means have a boundary if you if you draw art so what will happen if you write a poetry you have a boundary you have a boundary boundary sense in the thinking ability of the poet that is the boundary you don't know on what sense that fellow has written somebody put a beautiful art you can imagine in different direction another fellow can imagine something else is there in the world but subject science is not like this it has to solve the problem it has to address the challenge so challenge in the sense it has to develop your question in you so that is what this particularly with reference to nrm division you have to think whether you study agronomy whether you study soil science any subject any science subject so at the end of the day when you complete your uh, this thing you will feel that you are not study anything but the moment challenge is given to you your mind will start thinking so how i will solve this problem so it will come automatically it will come so the way you look into the things you will have a set of principles how to solve it if somebody says sir this is the soil uh, i am not able to grow tea so what is the solution so first i will check it okay you are not able to grow soil where is your location you get the geo location second thing you see what is the type of soil whether it is acidic or basic what, what is there that you will see it then third thing you will come climate okay so this is what nothing just keep on thinking it will come on your mind so this is what uh, your subject knowledge is very very important so a first a good nrm discipline subject means it should provide the base for thinking analytical ability like i, I told statistics is a tool gis is a tool biotechnology is a tool microbiology is a tool soil subject itself a distribution itself a tool to analyze a problem so this is what first you have to think in in your researchable issues straight forward i want to map the soil that is once upon a time maybe some 40 years before we thought that how to map a soil so once you put the soil and all soil map is ready for 250000 scale soil map is ready now how we will study the soil so distribution now gis have come now remote sensing has come now what 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 you will do with this soil nothing it ends there now you have to create the utility that is what the subject has to analyze so now you have a soil throughout soil map we have prepared now with this what utility you can derive is it a really map alone now now comes the user you take the user social angle you put it so if you put the social angle for example if a farmer want to grow certain crop if now the government is changed policy has changed agriculture policy has changed now people want to know commercial agriculture now you have to go commercial so if somebody wants okay i want to grow a a sugar cane factory here so i want to identify the sugar cane area that fellow is looking at the information of soil where i can grow the sugar cane then another fellow want to put up one industry of groundnut oil so where the groundnut is grown maybe the crop is not there but that fellow is ready to invest and make the farmer aware that groundnut is a very lucrative crop so you have to identify the area where groundnut is grown now your information is very much important how you will do you have a map with this map we cannot solve the solutions you, you cannot provide a solution so we have to go into the digital world now you convert this map into a digital format gis format digital format then user interface so what information i am looking at the soil map that information you have to provide so this is called a, a thematization of your subject you have a thematic solution so the user you have you have a industrial demand and you have a solution provider you have a land use map for some particular theme particular theme you have to extract the information so you have to build a system in such a way that 
it gives solution to somebody's problem soil information so i want to identify ground and growing areas you should be able to give ground and growing areas at what scale where is the spatial distribution what is the fertilizer required where it can be grown what is the existing crop now whether i want to change the cropping system or not you see how much how many information is required for providing a digital information so your map get converted into a digital now you want to provide a thematic information so this many information you can extract so now comes a gis tool that is data mining so you have to mine the information then you have to provide a thematic solution that is user liked information so you have a user interface so you have to identify the social profile so if you are keep on doing research on soil science and making a survey it is of no use for this world it is of no use zamane chale gaya the days are over now you have to provide a user based system but if you are able to build a system where sugarcane is grown and where the sugarcane crop can be extended by seeing a remote sensing picture by seeing your gis if you are able to provide a solution sugar industry will like you i tell you and in north india even one village one hectare they don't leave because we have a factory located on jurisdiction maybe in tamil nadu i don't know how it is there if you go to north india maharashtra up anywhere you go you have a sugar industry located in a particular place surrounding maybe some 10 km radius will be allotted to that particular sugar factory he cannot collect sugar cane from the next area nobody will allow you because his crushing capacity will come down so at that at that location so what they will look for each and every inch of land they want to utilize they want to get the soil information so i have given a consultancy Uh, by entire uh, up western up we have given a consultancy project how we can expand the sugarcane area now second question will come for a soil scientist whether i can go for intensive sugarcane or i will take only one crop so if you are able to make three uh, three year rotation with four crops one crop that fellow will get extra so you have to develop a sugarcane variety evaluate a variety where it fit into the short duration or it will come into the inter crop so if you are able to provide this solution as a soil scientist nutrient management then you are providing another solution to that fellow so what i am stressing here is you should be a solution provider at the end of the day the so once you do the research what the industry demands by looking at the figure you don't get anything but looking at the client you have to understand the client what he is looking then you provide the research so your research any researchable issues in nr particularly soils and should be demand driven it is not thematic driven so you understand your client you understand the need you understand the changing pattern of agriculture industry then you will come to know how you have to take a research so if you are not adapting to this kind of changes only you will produce the maps and thesis nothing else but when you are able to provide this in a mobile app so you have to learn little bit of mobile applications you you have to learn little bit of gis statistics social science all is there in your educational program wonderful uh, bs agriculture gives you everything in your bachelor we used to wonder so when you are a bachelor science from agriculture you are a better off but when you are master degree you are not knowing anything so that subject also bachelor is bs agriculture is one of the best discipline will introduce every science into you so you you have learned everything you even you have learned social media also how to handle media that also there so when you are linking all these subject into the subject of soil science or environmental science you will be able to provide a solution now the industry will look for you how you, wherever you are whether you are in cuba whether you are in usa your science is same you have to understand the soil you have to understand the cropping system you have to understand your client now put off your mind you build a database then provide that fellow you will be the most wanted fellow there for industry even after bs agriculture you can go and find a job where you have to look for a job you can become a consultant become a consultant for a sugar factory for 10 sugar factory you take every factory if you are able to expand at least 20 20 to 25 hectares of land in one year in one year you will be paid not less than 2 lakh rupees for year i am telling i got a consultancy of 10 lakh rupees 10 lakh rupees i got consultancy so this is the rate this is the this is the value of your brain so you look for this kind of solution change your outlook when you come out of the institution or university what you have learned here is only tools and analytical methods and understanding 
and the world is real world is different. That is what we have to work. So we do science. Maybe the science can be converted into technology. But the technology has to go to the field and the technology should address the problem in the field. So this is what you have to understand. You are doing a part of the system and their chain. We have a chain of value chain is there. So you are studying only part one third remaining two third is there. This two third you have to understand. Then only you will find your job. Now you will be very interesting to see that you can, you can become a consultant anywhere in the world. People will like even you can go to JS company. You can go your own consultancy company. You can start it with confidence. You can become advisor. You can you can be anything. But rest of the two third you have to understand. Then you will realize what you can do. Take soil for other things. What are all the gap? I told you one you have to convert into digital format. Other nutrient we are studying. So keep on studying what is the fertilizer dose? What is the nutrient requirement? It doesn't make any sense because a lot of people have done. Everybody knows that what is the fertilizer. You go to TNA website. I also used to download all the TNA books and recommendation and put it there. It is rubbish now. Everybody knows it. It is there online. You click in mobile. I will say if somebody asks, I will give the recommendation, but it doesn't make any sense for you that those days are gone for our AO friends. They have they will have a carrying a small book. We used to mug up rice. It is 80, 60, 60 for this crop. We used to study 40, 40, 60. Those days are gone. Now they are not required. Now what is required in nutrient management is how you will improve the efficiency. How you will improve? I will give you 100 kg of nitrogen. It should give at least 60 kg. 60% efficient should be there. Why it is only 25%? This is the question. How we will improve? Madam said uh, we are using a liquid fertilizer. Okay, fine. If you are using a liquid fertilizer per gauge 150 rupees, what you should expect? 100%. I am applying water drip. It should. Uh, it is going into the root zone. So if it is going to the root zone, why it cannot be 100%? Say example, your loss is only 10% evaporation loss, percolation loss, all put together. At least 80% you should get. But it is not giving. So what else from the crop from taking up the nutrient? So you have a technology. There is some gap is there. So there is a gap between the liquid in soil. Then the root zone absorption. So there is the gap, small gap, a micro environment, maybe a millimeter or maybe a centimeter. So something is happening. <coughs> maybe your iron is oxidized. So your iron get reduced and nitrogen uh, ammonia you put it became nitrate and get leached out or potassium getting leached out and phosphorus is getting fixed somewhere in the root zone or the root is not able to check because of some problem with the soil. So these two, when you are able to link just one centimeter only you are studying. So this is called a rhizosphere soil science. Now a new field is there, a rhizospheric soil applications. Don't look at one hectares of land. Just you are going to study five centimeter of soil on level. You imagine how much big problem you are solving. And if you are able to understand what is happening in the five centimeter of soil between the root zone and the water or nutrient, which is there only it is a five, five, five centimeter or maybe it is a millimeter. So what is happening in the surface of the root? How why it is this fellow is not going inside or any any transport system is there? How the root root is behaving? How the root hats are behaving? Only this portion micro portion five centimeter only you can have one PhD. I can guide 10 students out of this study. So you have to take this area when you solve it, what you are solving. So 40% nitrogen use efficiency. If you are able to increase to 60% by studying this 5 centimeter, that's what science is. You created a technology. So once you create a technology, there are a lot of industries ready waiting for you because you imagine so in entire India. Around uh, 60,000 uh, crores we spent on. Only on nitrogen around 60 to 65. 1000 crore and fertilizer subsidy. If your 5 centimeter study of relationship between soil solution and uh, this uh, um, rhizosphere soil solves 20% of the problem. So what is your contribution? You are contributing saving the country around 8 to 10 crore 1000 crore rupees. If you generate this technology, there are thousands of buyers for this technology. I tell you when we attend a meeting with the fertilizer industry, Madam Secretary asked this question. Can you ask, can you give me 5% efficiency of nitrogen so that my 5000 crore is saved for the country? Now see the magnification. So don't my, my, my concluding point is see a small area. You will laugh 
how to study this. No need for big field and all. You take a microenvironment, get a pot culture experiment, take a new bar studies, study this microenvironment as it is exists in the nature. Now you are solving and saving 5000 crore for the country Then industry wants you. That's all. Your life is different. A micro environmental micro space. Another good area is there. So when the crop grows, you, we I was working in island. So island ecosystem, we go around the islands. So everybody goes around. They see sometimes crocodile is there in the coastal areas. A lot of crocodiles will be sleeping early morning if you go. Then we pass between one island to another island. You have to take a ticket. You have to get a tribal pass. Then we have to go there. So one day I was going to one Nicobar Island is there, which is the southern part of the Andaman Nicobar Island. So when I go there, uh, they they if they like, they will call you inside the village. If they don't call, you have to stay there um, before four o'clock in the main. It is, we call it a administrative setup. They don't allow you to go inside. Maybe after four thirty five o'clock, you cannot go. They have their own customs, but we were very close with these tribal people. So we used to go by five o'clock, four o'clock. So all the tribal boys, they play football. Girls, they go for cycling, very enjoying uh, tribals. They are one of the most happiest person, I can say. Most happiest person on the earth is, I say, Nicobari tribals. Because they, the requirement is very limited. Their lifestyle is very simple. They share everything, barter system, no money, no currency, nothing. Have, uh, group cooking. So all the ladies, they sit together. You have pandanas. You may be seeing that pandanas is this much big fruit, just like a jackfruit. So they peel it off, boil it for two hours. From that, they will make laddu and sit, sitting together in a particular place. So they will chit chat everything. So it will take almost three to four hours to prepare a food for at least for 25 people in their family. So they, they live it in a group. So they we call it, they call it Tugait. Tugait means all lineage. Your uh, aunt and uh, Uncle Lal will live together. So they, this is how they live. We went to your coastal area along with some uh, 10 boys. Then they were playing. Then the backwater comes in a, in, in a day. There will be a rise and fall of water. So when the water rises, we call it high tide. Every day happens it. So when half of the tide is there, after two hours of high tide, they put the net. So they have a backwater. So that, that side and this side. They will put the net. They have tied with the rocks. They will put it there. That's all. Then they started singing and they went for uh, playing uh, football or sometimes they play rugby also with the coconut shell. Uh, so I was sitting, I took one of the girls uh, cycle and I was riding here and there. Then after two hours, they finished it. It was around five o'clock. Then they stopped everything. They said, OK, collect the fish. So, so many fishes were there, all uh, um, this this so many she fishes groupers were there troopers were there and uh, they cherries the octopus also so all this day in the backwater area it is there to my surprise they started counting one two three four five eleven so then they started me so 13 14 15 so count is the ends with 15 15 to 30 30 machi pakado they took a basket they put uh, 30 so in that they put the variety, then they removed the net. So hundreds of fish, they went outside to the sea. We two or three was there my, with my friend. He was very wanted. Idiot fellows, you the fish has come and you people are allowing it to go. I, that fellow replied, you idiot, where the fish will go? Tomorrow it will come back. It was very surprising, very surprising. He, we, we, we are trying to teach them catch the fish and put it in a refrigerator or crush it, make a juice, keep it. That fellow is telling, why, what idiot you are thinking here? Yeah? Allow it to go. Tomorrow, high tide, you come, it will come back. Where it will go? So tomorrow, maybe another fish will come. That fellow will not go alone. He will bring his own uh, girlfriend, his own boyfriend. Everybody will come tomorrow. He will catch it. What is the problem? Nature is preserving. Why you have to catch it? There I have learned. The self-content is the best way of life in the entire world. And if you are understanding this natural principle, how this tribal live, that is a wonderful way. Wonderful way. Need not to store anything. Satisfaction. So this satisfaction is very important. But there I have learned two, two three different things I have learned. Uh, because why I want to stress is how they save the resource for themselves. If you have 14 person, they will catch only 14. If they 15, they will catch 15. So 
resource that is called simple in the terms it's carrying capacity. So this is what your entire natural resource management is. Just you have to calculate the carrying capacity of that particular resource over which the population is defended. And if you are not able to calculate uh, carrying capacity, you will end up with a disaster. So same another area we have uh, Neil Island where uh, people will go for most of the tourists. They will go for visiting this island. So one day there was a depression and uh, no supply was able to go. So 1400 people standard there and morning they could not take a bath, no water to drink. Because three days the cyclone was static there. It was testing time for everybody. So between Port Blair and this island, there was a static of this depression. Nobody could be able to go with the supply. 1,400 people stranded without food, nothing. So they are forced to eat coconut, uh, boiled uh, fish, then bananas. They lived with only three food. Then they learned life of tribal, how they survived there. So the, the meaning is, we didn't calculate the carrying capacity of the island before we allow the tourists into the island. So how much water? So if, if you take the island, you have a coral base and below which you have a saline water. So when rainfall is there, so there is a lens, we call it a lens of water. So over the coral, you have a lens of water, a thin lens of water, maybe three to four meter water will be stored on the surface. So this is your drinking water availability. If you take, so the pressure grid will fall, so the sea water will come inside. So there is a sea water intrusion into the island, island coastal ecosystem. In addition to that, in addition to that, 1,400 people, human waste, where it will go? Where it will go? So it will spill over entire island coastal ecosystem. So this we fail to calculate. So your study is not only a subject or one particular matter. You are always, your study is ecosystem. You have to go for ecosystem based analysis. Once you do an ecosystem based analysis, you will understand what is the carrying capacity of the natural resource. So that is what we have to study always. So if you are studying a soil science, don't look soil as a soil entity. You see soil as a soil ecosystem. Soil is an ecosystem. It supports innumerable microbial life. It macroflora, macrofauna is there. There is a plants, there is a rodents, there is other organism. There is a biogeochemical cycle going on in the soil. That will come another one. So you study soil as an ecosystem and you understand this, then you study a part of it. If you are not understanding this, that you are studying a part of it, you will never understand what is the other part is. So your science is incomplete. So you study as an ecosystem, you will be able to address a human component, you can address the economic component, you can address the social component. So if you are not having this idea, you will never do it. So your study has to be complete or you understand that you are addressing a part of your larger ecosystem. So this mindset you should always carry in your research career so that you will grow when you grow in your life as a scientist, as a supervisor, just you will grasp it, what that fellow is doing. So this I learned from the tribals, how they manage the resource. And similarly, same uh, when, when we are stranded for around 14 to 20 days, once I was stranded in Great Nicobar, so I, I was going around. So on that day, uh, our chief minister, or our earlier chief minister, Karnanidhi also died. So there was no transport. So 14 or 16 days, I was stranded. I was roaming around the island with my two of my friends and one driver. So we were there. Then we went inside the forest. Let us see, go walk around. So walk around. Then we saw inside the forest, there is a center portions is there. There we found some coconut. Okay. Then when you come outside, they will, another coconuts will be there. It will be slightly less taller than the one which we see it inside. So when we go close to that uh, tribal people, they offer you coconut. Maybe if, if you are a guest, they call it Meman. Okay, so if, if you are a tribal's guest, simply they will climb even if it is 120 the material in fraction of a second they will climb. But otherwise, we go with the economic proposal. Even once we took a parachute company also, Merico, uh, for tribal people, then after making everything, uh, that fellow agreed to pay for 35 uh, rupees per kg. And finally, the tribal fellow asked, who will climb the tree? Then I, what for you are asking uh, right now this 35 rupees? No, 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 35 rupees per kg on top of the coconut tree, not below. 
have you ever seen that red is fixed on the top of the coconut tree not on the ground so our market produce comes to with the basket in the tree but they count everything on tree so they put the labor charge who will climb give me a labor charge what i am charging now you tell you who is the best economist who is the best economist we are tribal so this also i learned from them so how to value a human labor human labor so your mind you are putting your mind you are putting your labor that should be valued unfortunately we, in agriculture we are not valuing a human labor into it so when every farmer started like this i am giving my produce only not my labor you take it from my field you, you, you ask him you, you want to purchase a rice you go there they will give you a city you go to one year block and harvest your rice now you see the condition you might just imagine if every farmer sells their produce in the market not in the market only in the field you want 1 kg mango you go to block number 14 if you want 1 kg rice go and harvest rice if this is the situation like doctor 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 sits in some particular xyz hospital you go to apollo you wait for it then meet the doctor pay him 500 whether that fellow comes or not then you show him he will charge you similarly if any farmer does imagine the world how it will look that is what we are unfortunately lacking but the tribal has learned it so then they told the story of uh, the relationship with the uh, tribals and uh, tamil nadu then i started thinking that 14 days i have used it for my uh, just churning of my ideas my history my tamil interest everything i put it and after 14 days i discovered that the chola army landed in that particular island the great nicobar great nicobar island our chola army went under the rajendra sola they have blended it they have landed after landing they have taken coconut fresh it with water then then rebuilt their uh, ship and everything then they went to indonesia java sumatra every island they attacked and captured it they return back they left half of their army there only rajendra sola returned back to tanjur they left it they know that that fellow will come back and attack so the moment they started very casually the army is already stationed there you just see the wonderful knowledge of armory then how they used that one then i learned what is the relationship between these fellows and that fellows now you started digging out all the signs so i i, I went on uh, uh, this one uh, coconut tree was there and we took coconut uh, gem blossom from tamil nadu then coconut gem blossom from ande nicobar island then we started comparing this then we started comparing with animals then i started learning what is genomics then what was metagenomics so all genetics helped me to understand and finally i found out that there are three varieties of coconut which has been transported from nicobar to tamil nadu so the culture of economy third has been taught to the nicobaris by the tamils so this is the relationship between tamils and the nicobaris so this i learned after my 14 years of stay there a wonderful thing i have learned there so our people have taught them what is economics so our own science went to the tribals now we have a relationship genetic relationship which can be proved then our cultural relationship can be proved and how they tried uh, that uh, through that uh, trade route and wind direction i have learned that how the ship should have gone there so having said all these things why i am stressing it now i understand something they might have taken at that time now we can also look into the ocean how we can enrich our knowledge because a lot of plants are there a lot of mangroves are growing how it is growing in the natural environment we are not able to grow our rice we are not able to grow our tomato in a slight salinity of vapor if it is 8 or 8.5 you don't get a tomato you don't get brinjal so how to grow it now all the mangroves are not uh, saline tolerant now there is something is there in the soil so we looked into it then we collected the soil then we started characteristing we first did metagenomics then we identified uh, some of the enzymes which are highly present like phosphatase then some of the acid alkaline phosphatase is more than some of the microbes bacillus group of microbes are made in the mangrove ecosystem then then we were looking for this how this acid phosphatase is helping to recycle the phosphorus requirement of mangroves because its requirement is very high and similarly you will find always sulfur smell coming out from the marine sediment sulfur smell will be there how it get reduced then if it is get reduced how it is getting opposite how it is getting iron nutrition how it is getting copper 
how it is getting other nutrient. One fellow is reduced, another fellow is oxidized. So both are contradictory signs. So if there is something is there in the soil. Then we dig it out. Then we started uh, characterizing the soil. And uh, after two years of our research, we have found a, a wonderful group of microorganisms very close to the rhizospheres of mangroves. Like you, you work on VAMP, so we have identified some bacillus groups, even lysine bacillus groups of uh, microbial. They are involved in the transformation of phosphorus. Some reduced condition, some oxidized condition. So different packets will be there. So once the leaf falls and built up over the marine ecosystem, in the bottom end, you will find sulfur. Because once it gets decomposed and if it is pressurized, devoid of oxygen. Immaterial, salinity, no matter. So in that conditions, pressurizer condition, so sulfur reducing bacteria will come. So in the top, where the fresh leaf will keep on falling, the soil will be bulky. So in that air, sulfur oxidizing bacteria, iron, copper oxidizing bacteria used to live. So within a span of 5 to 10 centimeter, you will have 3 to 4 strata. And you will find redox potential is constantly changing from within. Within one feet, you will find redox potential. Very, very high difference or variation in redox potential of this reduced soil. So this is what we have measured it. Then we identified for each interval of this redox potential and pH, we isolated different different groups of microorganisms. So that has uh, came a game changer for our research on soil salinity. So those organisms, when you uh, put into the roots and seeds, uh, it is not genetically controlled. It is environmental control character. We are not looking at the genetic control. That is not our subject. But as far as NRM subject is there, you have to change the soil ecosystem. So how to change? You introduce new microorganism which you have isolated from the natural condition into the cultivator system. Now you check. How to check? You have to first check it in a petri dish whether it has the, any stimulation effect is there. So without effect, it won't be. Maybe we study it in symbiosis. Yes, symbiosis. It is not like that. Whether it has a stimulation effect. So you put the organism into the root zone. You will find, uh, SAR will be able to tell what are all the uh, protein or this we were discussing in the morning. So th then I get into the how these genetics work, how this physiology work. So once you put into the live live plant in a pot culture, then your proline content will increase, your phenolic content will increase, then your other resistance chemical compounds will increase. Some of the metabolites will increase because of just a stimulation effect. It is not genetically controlled. Maybe it is genetically controlled. We are yet to study. But I, we will look at a soil scientist, soil biologist. We look at the how this microbial root interaction stimulate the plant, some of the metabolites which helps the plant to adapt to a particular condition, maybe saline conditions. So we put the plant tomato. Now we can grow the plant up to 7.5, up to 8 pH with the microbial inoculation of seed priming effect. So by changing mull. So another, another technique we have learned the same using. You leave over the soil. So you, you just look at the root zone environment. We call it soil moisture control section. So only in the soil moisture control section, you change your growing media. Why you are looking at the entire one hectare line? Just the root zone, you take it. Maybe half feet is required. You change the media with uh, maybe some composted or coir material. Uh, then you mix it with your garden land soil. Put your bacteria where it can stimulate. Put it in the soil or put it in a polythene bag, just like a small lysimeter. meter. It's a small packet lysimeter, polythene lysimeter. You put it, the grow the plants, it will wonderfully grow. Instead of uh, 1 kg per plant, I will get 800 gram. It's good enough in saline soil. So I imitate the nature. One. Second thing, I compromise yield, but yet I will be success in growing crop in a saline environment. So this is what you have to learn from the wild conditions. Similarly, a lot of wild plants are there. So from that wild plant in Andaman, I have learned one uh, tea species is there, then one wild nutmeg species is there, spices are there. So these are saline, they grow in the saline area. Simply why they survive? There is some in the micro environment. So we isolated the soil, we isolated the fungus, then we found that there is some thermophilic fungus available. They decompose the wood and other material. On the wood, these roots go inside and grow. You cannot imagine. In a root, partially decomposed the wood and roots, these roots will go, it will survive, it will get extracted, it acts just like a filter. Now this, then this nutmeg and other trees to grow in the saline environment. Now comes your a research on a media. Now, no more you are a soil scientist. 
Now you have to address the issue of how you will feed the root system. So you have a hydrophonics. You can address through water, you can address through compost, you can address through any means, even aerophonics. People are now growing aero. Put the sponge, put your uh, seed, the root will come, give angarage through sponge, some kind of uh, cotton-like material. Now only you feed the nutrient. So how to solve this issue? Now no more you are a soil scientist. You have to provide nutrient into the soil root, uh, plant root system. This is also part of your science. So no more you are a soil scientist. Now you are science providing growing media. That's what the definition of soil science is. It not soil means the one which provide anchorage, the one which provide media. So now why you are looking at only mineral composition of soil? There is an organic component. We fail to forget because we study normally. 45% uh, mineral combustion, rest 5% is organic component, rest 50 is air and water. So this is what the general combustion. So you leave about 45%, take only 5% of organic component. You make it a media and allow the crop, support the crop to grow. So this kind of research is very much important for addressing arid zone, semi-arid zone and climatically vulnerable zone. Like you have a Ladakh, you have Kashmir, you have entire Rajasthan, you have a desert is there. You look at some of the Chinese publications, you will find that how to grow a beautiful grab in the deserts. So this desert, they will use only the climate. They use the sunlight. They use the space. Put your polyhouse inside. You put the grow media. You grow a wonderful crop. You grow stages, vertical farming. So vertical farming is neither agronomy, nor physiology, nor biotechnology, nor science. It is a science total science, it's agriculture science. So vertical farming, anybody can contribute. That's a challenge. So China is growing, now Mongolia is growing. Now that same technique, people will put it like photovoltaic system. So photovoltaic system means you harvest the sunlight by using a solar panel, below which you have a shed will be there. So in the shed, in the desert area, so it will reduce the evaporation, evapotranspiration. So under which you can grow a crop, like shared loving crop where your water requirement is very less. So your water productivity is more. So you are artificially providing a shed for a particular crop. Now you are harvesting solar radiation, now converting into electricity. Now you run your piling house. Keep a cool. Maintain the aeration and circulation in the daytime. Night it will be cool enough. So you are growing. So outside one crop, inside another crop, so your system is driven by your solar energy. Yeah, totally a natural energy harvester in a desert area. So this is how you have to think, and this is called a photovoltaic agriculture. Yeah, fully 100% commercial agriculture. So you have to think in this line, that don't think soil as only growing media. Take the definition. If you're providing a growing media, it is also soil science. And if you're providing the best natural environment, that is also natural resource management. If you are growing a crop, able to grow a crop in a vertical farming, that is also agronomy. Come out of the definition. Definition is there only for PG, UG courses, just to understand. So once you understand, you have to come out of that uh, box, then you have to do how we can solve the issues. So these are all the some of the issues and the other things you have. Another issue is important is climate change. We all know soil or agronomy is a product of CLORPT, so climate relief organism. Do you mean that all are static? Never. So climate is changing, time is changing, organism is changing, relief is changing. So everything is changing. Now then how your definition will remain same? How your soil will remain same? So all are, all are not, all, all the five are dynamic. How your soil will be remain same? So it is also dynamic system. So when you say you dynamic, it is not that climate change alone, land use change. That is also dynamic. Organism changing a, um, surface, your microbial, all input, output changing. So it is all changing. Topography is remain. It is not also static. It is also changing because of erosion, because of human intervention, leveling, sloping, terracing. So all this engineering part of your agriculture, we call it soil water conservation. So by conservation of soil, you are changing the topography. You are changing the dimension by which the root penetration is there, by which the water penetration is there, all we are changing. So this is a wonderful area where you can do your research by keeping other things in static condition. Only I change the climate, how it is going to affect my soil nutrition, how it is going to affect my other things should be static. Or you change the relief, keep other thing in constant. A wonderful science will come out that is you, you, you have to build a phytotronic facility. 
you, you filled a biotronic facility. It is, you don't think that it is out of soil science. Don't think that it is out of agronomy or climate. It is a natural resource management. How you address? So keep some four factor static, vary one factor in a small phytotronic facility or in a small incubator. Then you study, enrich the carbon dioxide. Enrich the carbon dioxide. Now you study how the microbial population is going to change, how your compost, composting, nutrient uptake, everything is going to change in the soil. A wonderful science you will discover. A phytotronic just a facility of one meter by one meter is required. You can enrich it. N number of studies you can do. You vary the C4 crop, C4, C3 crop. Then you change the light duration. You study it. So you will come out with a wonderful technique without soil, without any anything. Only how the nutrient uptake is there, how it is being distributed. Over and above, even at the higher level, I tell you. We, we have also conducted one experiment that space technology has come now. So that also you are you will be laughing if I say, can you grow crops in moon? Can you crop grow in space? Have you ever thought of it? Whether we can grow it or not? Is it possible? One is oxygen is not there, so we cannot grow. Then okay, if I am able to provide oxygen, what else is not there? Gravity is not there. So in a divide of gravity. How the root will grow. So it will be callous formation. One thing. Second thing this all the plant take nutrient against the gravity. Against the gravity. Flower comes when GA production is sufficient enough. GA production is sufficient enough when your temperature is for a photo period. We call it a photo period effect. But in the moon, in the space, photo period, you cannot define how you will grow the crop. There are certain crops you can grow like green gram. Green gram is one of the wonderful crop. It produces a lot of oxygen when you provide the sunlight, but it can grow and mobilize nutrient against the gravity. Against the gravity, even if it is there or not, it will grow. So this is what science. So we have learned to do research when there is a gravity. Now you think you can do a research without gravity. This is what American thinks. This is what NASA thinks. So you can grow a crops in moon. You look at the challenge, not only water, other problems are there. Now, this I am talking something on space, not like that. You come back to Earth. Now, there are a lot of places on Earth where the gravity effect is minimal. Like if you go to Trivandrum, almost close to negligible. That is why Tumba station is kept there, where the gravitational pull is less so that rocket can propel. That is the one of the ideal place. Another one I am telling, it is only gravity. But the entire world magnetic field Concentrate on one particular place. You know, where is that place? Where? Where the entire world magnetic field comes to a halt. Yes, it is in Chidambaram. Chidambaram Sri Ranga temple, where the dancing Siva is there, that is the point where the entire world magnetic field gets in one particular point. You see how our forefathers have imagined the magnetic field. And similarly, you can do research on magnetization effect on crop plants. Gravity on the crop plants, so gravity on nutritional. Maybe today it will it look like foolish. Maybe it look like foolish, but you are giving food for the future. So this is what we have to think. When there is no water, how you will grow the water? Only by spraying water. We go we, we go for not only hydrophonics, but you have to go for maintaining only RH, relative humidity, and absorbing the water and providing the solutions. Like from here, you just suck the water, compress it just like your refrigerator and provide the water, recycle it. So in a zero water condition, in a limited gravity, how we can grow the crop? If you grow this crop, if you are able to succeed, Israel is there to pay any amount of money to pay you and purchase the technology. And their Europe is waiting and their Siberia is waiting for your technology. So you do research for the sake of science, but you sell the technology somewhere else where the people are demand. So your client is not in Tamil Nadu. Your client is in their world. So this is what you have to think when you do research. When you come, you have to come out of the technology where there is a buyer, where there is a solution, there, there is a challenge. You can address the solution like water, like gravity, like magnetic field. So all will have effect on your crop growth and nutrition movement. This you can study. Because uh, you may be knowing, wondering why we are talking about magnetic field effect, 
we are talking about uh, water stress so it's all uh, some high profile studies so sar was telling some 15 years back if somebody goes outside they will say like a child people will play with your helicopter automated helicopter now it has become a drone now drone is going to dry your applications like this when you have a science when you have a solution there will be a tector maybe after five years there will be a tector so this is what you have to think a new technologies maybe a dry soil you take it maybe you take a um, highly rocky area how you can make a drill then in the drill you can put your growing media and you can grow so entire maharashtra belt where the basaltic is there so they will be growing or else you go for bioremediation bioremediation so lot of sand mine sand mines sand mines are there in tamil nadu river sand is being mined rocks are being mined and mountains are being cut how you will rejuvenate back again whether you will drill and put the seed and grow by seed ball technique or you will level it put the soil back again like em sand and all you have to put you have to grow or look for a grasses where it can grow on the surface of this thing or you use microbial solution to promote the crop on that particular land so bio remediation so because mining is going to happen we cannot stop human activities but side by side you have to develop a technique where you are not destroying the natural resources to the large extent where it will go completely degraded so side by side if you are providing a solution there are lot of mine companies are there they will be paying for you under corporate social responsibility act so there is a corporate social responsibility is there where every company has to spend money for a research and development of their land that they have spoiled so now some two months back we have attended a meeting where this tata steel jhl then another two government tiskal and other companies now they say they have accumulated something around 10 10000 tons of this uh, slack basic slack steel so when you produce a steel and the raw material the waste comes out is calcium phosphate along with chromium that is the very big problem chromium and nickel will be the heavy metal available so there are 10000 tons of material they have assumed so government told them you stop steel production because you guys are producing more waste than the steel so you stop it so some of the companies they are importing steel instead of producing steel so government under social responsibility act you first you dispose then you go for a steel production it is stop so they are paying around 25 crores to our icr system nrm we are leading that project so we are given to four five institutions so how we can solve this problem so how calcium phosphate can be dissolved so phosphorus can be separated calcium can be separated used as uh, liming material phosphorus can be used and how to accumulate the chromium by bio remediation so industry a technology grows but side by side they generate a problem so you ought to just go what these fellows are creating so instead of uh, doing research on fertilizer fertilizer ratios and all you look at this problem what industry is doing what they are providing what issues they are creating challenge you are creating so this is their waste is your challenge your challenge is your science this also you can solve and you can generate a technology right this moment if you are able to solve this basic problem i can get you more than 100 crores for this institute tata steel is ready to pay more than 100 crore if you are able to solve this issue one is you are producing phosphorus another liming material you can use it so look at the industries also similar industries what waste they are generating waste can be recycled like your water waste water recycling like every city urban area now they are going for waste water so what they will do there is a heavy metal problem there is a microbial load problem so how you can solve as a soil scientist as a chemist don't look at soil alone you are chemistry also you have biochemistry you have basic chemistry you have chemicals then you have agriculture chemistry all these courses are taught for you use your brain now come out with a solution simple solution we are doing a research at the indian institute of water management so there is the pipe where the farmer goes for irrigation there is a pipeline is there so in that pipe you put different separation you put it like a screw so one box will be your carbide activated charcoal then another box can be sand another box can be heavy metal remover then another box can be a microbial oxidizer so the water will come stay for a while these microbes are highly charged they will only you have to provide oxygen so once you provide oxygen so all the reduced metals will be oxidized so it will become intox not toxic other heavy metal 
you apply some magnetic field, then you have electric field, you remove it. So it will have a circulation system. So when you go for a fast circulation, people, you see how people are imagining. So water comes, you design a pipeline in a such a way that it will give you, uh, you take the potential energy, store it, comes down, then spiral it. Once you spiral, it will give you effect of centrifugal effect. So by centrifugal effect, so heavy metal goes up, then other 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 commands, lighter commands will be down. So you remove by just a funneling. No need for precipitation, just a spiraling effect. Raise the water level, raise the increase the potential energy, allow it to move, make it to spiral. So that speed itself will take care of heavy metal, heavy material, and light material. So from the center, you will absorb the water and rest will go to the forest storage tank. A simple design, one fellow has designed it. So still the institute is going on. So wastewater utilization itself, one of the wonderful area of research. So a lot of things has to be addressed. So if you are out of four or five filter, I told, put all the filter together, then you will identify, you can just a MSc student, you, you design only one filter. That is enough. You will be paid crores of rupees from the industry to purchase this. How much wastewater we are generating every day. So, so one way you are solving the issue, another way you are generating water for agriculture. So these are all some of the future research need in NRM discipline you have to work. Um, other than this uh, last point I want to make is, so when you study here in the institution, the only fellow who can answer all your nonsense question, whether it is foolish or whether it is intelligent is your teacher. You put them in stress. Don't allow your teacher to put stress on you. One exam. So teacher can put you stress only during exam, but you can put teacher into stress every day. Every day you can put a stress if you're a quality student. Ask them. Let them go and refer and answer tomorrow. Why you have to worry? When the teacher takes a class, you ask how oxygen is, this iron is oxidized in a reduced environment. So teacher will be very worried. Uh, it, it is the problem for my career. Tomorrow I will answer. They will go refer. They know how to do it easy then they will give you a clarification but this all happens when you are a student now i cannot ask so i i cannot search this thing so your basic analytical chemistry has to be very strong what you are calculating is very strong so if you understand the relation don't worry when you are doing practical class i also wonder how madam comes take 10 ml of uh, salicylic acid then put it there put some indicator then you allow the oxygen ammonia to get absorbed, then it get uh, uh, into ammonium salicylate and bacteria. This is what I understand now. So madam used to give me 5 ml, 10 ml, 6 ml. I wondered if you remove this 5 ml, 10 ml, I will be very easy, very easy for me to remember. So why this is required? This I learned after maybe five years of my completion of uh, BS agriculture. What, what is the funda behind this thing? So it means that I didn't understand my basic chemistry. So ammonia will react with salicylate, it will form ammonium salicylate. So ammonium salicylate is the basic, so you have to treat it with acid. Whatever may be 0.5 ml, madam gives 0.5 ml, you calculate for 1 ml. So if you're an intelligent student, why I will take 1 normal? I will take 2 normal, calculate and give the answer. She will tick. She will give you the mark. So Panda is saying that basic analytical chemistry has to be very strong for you. You have to understand how the reaction occurs. What is the end product? So what is the indicator we are using? So if you understand this, don't worry about it. Now I don't know Simansu, I don't know Thermo Scientific. No instrument I will know now, as of now. I, I honestly am admitting. I have 15 institutes under me. I visit every lab. I am very fully students of all this instrumentation, but I am very confident of my basic science. I will go and ask this question. Okay, you are titrating, your machine is giving this result. So only thing you like, only questions I will ask, used to ask them, what is your standard? Simple, that fellow, you will cut that fellow. Standard, what standard, sir? Against what you are measuring? You have thousands of instruments. Okay, you feed it, it will give the number. What is that number? Against what you are measuring? So science should have a scale, is it not? So against what you are measuring? The entire universe, we are measuring by reference point. You don't, you, you know this? Against hydrogen, you are measuring entire thing. We forget it. What is the molecular weight of hydrogen? Something 1.000, something is there. Who has so far measured it? If any 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 uh, weight or balance is said to measure it, Avogadro number says 6.03 into 10 power 23. It's the assumption. Nobody has disproved it. Nobody has proved it. It is an assumption. But complete assumption that uh, one wonderful fellow 
uh, uh, this uh, mentally put the table by putting the number. You, you may be knowing this periodic table. So periodic table will make you a wonderful chemist in the world. Just to know that one page, this I learned after my I completing my MSc. So I started mugging up all this periodic table. I understand what is this. All then I realized that this in the tenth class itself we have studied. In the chemistry class, Madam was shouting. Thuraraj Muthiya was telling the same question. Are yeah, atomic weight divided by this you will get equivalent weight. So once your equivalent weight is different for your percentage solution, how to calculate K and O3? What is the molecular weight for K and what is molecular weight? This I have learned after five years. Once I look at the periodic table, then to my wonder again. That periodic table was set in something around 1885. One century ago, one, 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 one scientist has put that table. So that table is enough to make you a scientist. You just look at this periodic table, how it has been arranged. Many of us don't know how to calculate. That periodic table, you keep it in your pocket and see every day you, you will be able to solve so many questions, so many reactions, so many equations you will solve. So once you understand this, this instrument is nothing. So you are measuring six spectrophotometer. You are measuring something against what? And you are measuring the length against what? What is your scale? So you are measuring nitrogen. What you are measuring? On equivalent basis, you are measuring. Nothing else. So one gram of uh, my titer value is this much. So this much is consumed. How much my nitrogen is calculated? You bring any machine. I will question it. I will verify it. Simple. You take a water. You put it to any machine, even if it is a faulty machine. So my teacher has taught me how to measure use a fault machine, a pH meter to correct it correctly. So you take a, everything normal value, repeat it, or you take a neutral, uh, what you call uh, distilled water. You take repeat it with the distilled water, repeat with the same sample, you will get error mean square. Plot it. You put actual value, minus it, you will get the actual value. Simple. How many of you know? I will catch you how accurate your machine is there. So this is what right now my job is there, going and fault finding <laughs> every institution. So I am very humble and simple, but I ask one or two questions: How you are measuring? How your machines? Whether whatever company it is, the, what is your basic principle? Sir, this is the laser operated machine. These uh, all these things I know. What is your result? What is that number? Whether it is a digitally transformed number or it is a reference value or it is a quantified or it is a gravimetric measurement. What you are doing? None of them able to tell. Even scientists. You just ask them how you are measuring. Are you using gravimetric? Are you using an equivalent basis? Are you are measuring a scale? Or you are measuring a transparent property of light? That is light penetration. That only your spectrophotometer functions. With reference to zero, how your penetration is there. The concentration is calibrated. It is not actual. It is not actual. It is a calibrated value. You don't know this if you are how it is getting calibrated with spectrophotometer. You are no more. You are not required. But if you understand this principle, now n number of companies are there to pay you at any amount. You see, in your own university, you have a Simonsa machine. Somebody is sitting, he is an electronic engineer. He doesn't know the chemistry. But you are the chemistry. Then if you know how this basic chemistry functions, how what is the end result? That is enough for you. Electronics, you will learn. Electronics, you ask what is the button, where is the switch, how much electricity, how the battery functions, how the output is there, what is the output related to, what is the intensity. Simply you put the equation, you will get the value. So you will be most one of the most the most important paid uh, chemical engineer required for the industry. Tools, equipments. So all the basic principle is based on your analytical chemistry. So analytical chemistry research if you are able to produce some extract and if you are able to provide some solution analytically, how you make it an instrumentation? Or if instrumentation is at fault, how you will solve it? If you don't know the basic of analytical chemistry, you are not there. So this is also one of the wonderful area of research, which is most advanced countries. They take it up with that. They encash the money. They are pay. You, you see the machine CH analyzer. They are coming around 30, 35 lakh rupees. What is there inside? Nothing. They are oxidized it, get the optimization, then they measure it with the laser beam, then intensity is measured, they give the value. This is what they are doing. We can build a small one feet machine. We can also build it if you understand how the optimization is done. That's what your entire CH analyzer for which you are paying 30 lakhs. So if you are able to solve, if the fellow says that I am not getting the reading, my, my reading is very less, then you just see the organic matter, do it with the um, wet digestion method. 
identify okay it is two percent solution now you expect what is the machine has to give the reading what is the error so once you locate the error you will identify where the error is there this that chemical engineer mechanical engineer will never do and never he will understand because he will see only the electrical beam but being a chemist you know the basic uh, um, science behind it carbon is oxidized so what is reminding that you are back titrating and estimating on equivalent basis don't look at it. You are on back calculating on equivalent basis. You are estimating. If you understand, you look at the machine. What the machine is doing? It is automizing all the carbon, putting the B. So how much atom is there? That much is reflected and remaining will come. So with reference to the zero, we are measuring. So this is the principle. Now you do it three, four sample, wet digestion, then put it in the machine. You measure it, identify the difference. Error you will know. Whether the machines works or not, whether there is a problem of beam, whether there is automation problem. So what reading it gives, you will be the wonderful solution provided for the entire industry of uh, machines and tools. This is also a wonderful area of research for uh, as, as a chemist, you can take it up a profession. You can start your own servicing company also. Not necessarily you will be always a job seeker. You can be a job provider as well. Now, government is giving a startup program. Your own institute, I understand from your director, PGT, that they have a wonderful facility for students also to start up. So you, you can start up and you can stand up your own because your university gives you on lease basis for three months, four months, you start it, have a service industry, then you can start up your own self, just like a chemical engineer. Why you are calling yourself soil scientist with put MSc? You just see, I am service provider. So service industry from soil science. Soil chemist. That is also one of the wonderful area of research. You can do it. You can match it with any country because all this, whatever principle, just I am telling, these are all universal. It is not only India, Tamil Nadu alone. It's a universal science. So you are valued. Your brain is valued throughout the globe. Even if you are in the satellite, you are valued. So another area is uh, very important. I said to you, whatever you think, you think large, but solve it in your laboratory. It has its own application. Don't fear of it. So look at the nature. You can solve. Look at the carrying capacity. You can solve. Look at the people's behavior. You can solve. Look at the way the con consumer wants the things out of you. You can solve the issues. Enjoy your life. Have a good friendship. Have a good student. OK, thank you very much. Thank so you, sir. This is what I want to say. So I, I'm not going to teach you anything, any science and all. It's my experience and thoughts how you will be there. So if you have any doubts, you can ask me. If your uh, dean gives me some more time, so we will take some of the question or discussion with students. Uh, very uh, excellent and uh, elaborate and uh, uh, subject he discussed. Uh, at last, uh, from basic uh, atom to space, where soil is uh, uh, play a role in every science. So that is the way. Really great presentation, great uh, oration. It's really great. Thank you. I, I request all of you to give one more, more applause for Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, really wonderful evening. I never thought uh, Velmurgan well, have this much uh, <laughs> when we are. <laughs> so really, I am uh, now today. I learn more on uh, soil chemistry. <laughs> so, so re really, this kind of uh, not only the science, how to communicate the science. Many people they, they could not able to communicate the science. So he is a very good communicator on the science. That too, a soil science per person make it a things as a how the entire circulate you can call it a circular economy how the things are moving around so he circulate this soil can penetrate everything not not soil as a base but soil can penetrate the in every field so really it's a wonderful lecture i enjoyed that thank, thank you. you sir thank you so much as the, our dean and directors pointed out this is really a wonderful evening actually i was asking uh, 
my because my pg coordinator was asking me madam just to kindly ask on what title our chief guest is going to talk then i just to put him on whatsapp then uh, then i uh, then spoke to him he was in bombay airport then he said madam no specific topic it won't be interesting i will talk already i have decided uh, uh, the thing if you want a topic specifically it will be the researchable issues and advances in our i'll put out put it right now in whatsapp immediately he has put out put it out and really we all enjoyed actually i yeah yeah it is uh, really a thought provoking and uh, really it's a proud from woman for me as a teacher as a teacher really i feel very proud i feel very proud uh, my second batch student undergraduate student is standing in the podium and made every one of us a glorious evening a very very good interesting evening to all of us and I, and, and i am also equally happy that one of my uh, senior student is now in a very good position in the university uh, having two portfolios uh, as the dean spgs and uh, dean director cpmb and my my second batch student as the uh, very good position in icar as the assistant director general soil and water management if i am correct next to our senior dr uh, m velaidam i think uh, dr vel murugan is the next one from our tamil nadu that two from our alumnus give us a big hand till uh, sir uh, sir used to be a guiding guiding force to all of us especially to ssr project uh, he will be our uh, backbone yes, though sir. he was in the okay. icr system still we have contact with sir and many important things i used to talk to him and he is a guiding force so really uh, we feel proud uh, to be with you today evening and I, actually i was about to go to chennai for an official meeting today i must thank my director i told him i invited our adg and my student dr vel murugan please make alternate arrangements i want to be here so thanks to our director also so the real it's uh, thought provoking and uh, any interesting questions one or two from students i think uh, uh, our adg will be very happy because this is mainly for student research also actually i look into all these aspect uh, not only for you because uh, under me lot of institutes are there now after taking over now i have to review the entire aicrp research system in the entire country so i think uh, uh, our uh, tnoe we have around 5 to 6 asrp program under natural resource management including climate change in the in the coming months we are going to change entire thing uh, because simple i will give you how the system works you will still understand um, when you get the f- institutions work only you count teachers are there you are students are there how the fund comes how the structure built it on uh, you have a uh, money has to come from the government allotment so there is the uh, government is uh, giving money it is not like that so before government gives money you have to build up your research need what is the need for research justify that question i have to justify so once you justify need for research then they will ask what who is the taker you identify your client so i have to put the client so this two question when i answer now then per per rupee invested what is the return from science this is not i told you this is question for the teachers and researchers not for the student but just for your information so nidhi ayog is our reviewing body so nidhi ayog that is the planning commission they will ask you what is the rupee invested what is the return for research that is why your university is now forcing every staff you generate your own research they will only salary so what is the output of it now government wants no more it is a free money you have to generate and you have to serve the society you are every rupee invested as alternate values so what is the alternate they have business so science has give more so that we have to justify so once this justification goes on for 3 to 5 times the grilling of planning commission so this is what my job there so i have to defend entire nrm research including all your asrp so i have to defend defend it for seven times this all this question so unfortunately my own classmate is sitting at uh, nidhi ayog and asking me question so after seventh round of question i got irritated and i came down and i told my boss that, that lady neetu singh is asking so many question he asked her, who neetu then he took the phone then she asked her madam last project report you have not, not submitted please come and submit 
we wanted that uh, extra moral project. So CSNAT submitted the final report and four, around 4.2 lakh rupees is pending. That she is not written. Now she became a Nidia member. She is asking hundreds of questions. My boss asked, you return the money, submit the report, then you go there. Then she told, sir, that is uh, submitted. Then he told, I am sending you a no due certificate. You just receive, just, just for fun, he told. Within half an hour, she was there in my table in front of me. Same lady sitting in front of me, sir, please clear my. I said, now you understand what is scientist? Who have given you the no dues? My, I asked only one question. Who gave you no dues? You have not submitted the final report of the project that you have done as a scientist. Now you are sitting in planning commission. You are asking me question. How science is being done? This is politics. I'm telling. So this also we do. This also we have to learn. So that lady came and cleared all the things. And from next day onwards, my proposal goes. She will sign it and send it to the Ministry of Expenditure. So it goes to the Ministry of Expenditure. The, again, the grill and uh, economic point of view. So once they clear, then it goes to the minister. Then it goes to the parliament for final approval. So we call it demand for grants. You might have in the newspaper you have studied. So agriculture, we, we asked 24,000 demand for grants. So parliament approves. Then the money comes back. Just for your information, how we get allocation. So once this allocation is there, now we distribute to all the people based on this. But now we have another system outcome output research so university also introduced the same that is your responsibility how the outcome is there from the project if you are a student that is also measures and if you are uh, four out of four that is also measures on your teacher and if you are producing a wet quality paper that also measures on the university grading rating so your performance is measured on the university's performance so based on this we are going to credit rate it based on this your university will get the money Based on this, we'll distribute the money. So after collection, all this throughout India for either entire North system or ICR system, we will collect all information and put the reply to the planning commission. Now we have to satisfy Ministry of Expenditure. Then it goes to the ministry, then parliament, standing committee will approve. Then you get the money. Then you submit the audit utilization certificate. This we understand. So when you take up a private project, a private company, so this system will be there in every company. There is an audit. There is uh, money invested. You have to give the output. Then you have to quantify your output in terms of what is your target, what you have achieved. So this is what very important for any researcher, young scientist or young students. I am telling you, when you take a private job or governments or anything, you are measured against the target. What is your target? How you are measuring? I give you ten thousand rupees salary. What is your output? This will be measured in the coming days. So. I have to say this. I didn't say because otherwise you don't think uh, SAR is uh, terrorizing you. It is not like that. When I am getting my salary, you will also get your salary. It is very simple. Only thing is you have to understand how the system functions. So this is this is how we get the money. This is how we do research. So research is not free. Your mind is not free. Your knowledge is valued. So your time is also valued. You understand this. Yeah, how the research, either private research or government research or university or students, you have a target against the target you have been evaluated. Your performance, science performance, you have to provide. Performance is very important. So that is how your planning is very important. Before doing or initiating any research, I forgot to tell you, your planning and methodology is very, very important. So if you did a mistake in your methodology, if you did mistake in your planning, so you will lose the time. Private industry won't sustain you. If you, six months is wasted to get the output, they will throw you out. So planning is very important. So you have to be to be more precise. Your 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 methodology should be very clear. So this is also you have to learn from when you go out of these institutes. Don't worry. Always you will carry the address or the value of the institution and the teacher with you. That always protect you, whether you like it or not. They will ask you who is your teacher from which university, which class you are, that give you enough cushion for you to accommodate your small, small mistakes. That is always there. So any question if you have, don't worry. Even if it is silly, you can ask me. If I am able to say, I will say. Otherwise, I will pause it out. Good evening, sir. Actually, very thank, uh, we are very, very thankful to uh, giving this uh, wonderful lecture. Uh, we are uh, getting more knowledge uh, the, uh, yeah, from your experience. Uh, my question is, 
um, that we are covering uh, almost uh, all the research research researchable issues, but we are faced to uh, covering that malnutrition problem that we are facing nowadays uh, because um, we are chasing the food production for 2025 that we have to meet the 300 million tons of food grains for 2025. So that we have to chasing that food production, we are fails to um, uh, uh, maintaining the, uh, sorry, um, uh, to getting the bio, uh, bio fortification or uh, to, to overcome that malnutrition. So what are the strategies that we have to uh, manage that bio fortification in order to uh, reducing that malnutrition that even though we are uh, getting more food production that we are having the satisfied food production in India also work. But even though we are facing that malnutrition problem that that creating more sensible to uh, living uh, our, our living system. So what is this uh, whether we are we chasing that food production uh, to satisfy that uh, this population. Uh, along uh, to along with that um, biofortification. So, what will be the strategy to uh, meet out that kind of population uh, along with the biofortification? That's my question, sir. Very good uh, question. So, as a researchable, researchable issue, I tell you, leave over the um, policies and the politics of uh, food and food and malnutrition. The science is there are two way two way two way approach for this your question food security and malnutrition simple you back to back to your uh, basic nothing so biofortification is media hype we believe biofortification is industrial hype nothing else nothing else you are you your you, you, your grand your grandfather ever suffered from uh, sugar your grandmother ever suffered from pressure why? They take rice which has the bran into it. Now you are removing the rice, bran, and their nutrition goes. Now you are telling I want to buy a fortify. It's a media and industry hype. Simple. You take millets, you will you don't record anything. You take uh, you take it, you will never suffer from vitamin deficiency, no mineral deficiency. Take rice that you take it. Once rice in India was 70 rupees, millets were sold at the price of 15 or 20 rupees. It is called poor van. That is why it is called minor millets. Minor people eat, poor people eat, they call it minor. Now, the, in the, in the rice price is 30 rupees, 35 rupees, fine grain you are getting rice, and the millet price is something about 80 to 90 rupees per kg. It's human preparant change. Okay, that is one, one way of answering. Another way is, for rice, the footprint is something around uh, 40 liters, uh, 40 to 50 liters uh, per, per kg of production. You take sugar gain, still it is higher, something around 80 to 100 liters per kg of sugar produced. Now, simply, why you want to produce sugar gain? I have alternate idea. Why I have to spend 100 liters of water, which I don't have, and still I have to produce a 1 kg of sugar? I get the sugar. At instead of maybe by spending 100 liter, I am getting it for 30 rupees, 40 rupees. I will import it for 20 rupees. I save 100 liters of water. I produce the export commodity. I will go for a fruit production. I will go for banana. I will go, I will go for uh, uh, spices. I will get more return. This is what a scientist view. So you have to change the way you look at the food, food problem. We are not facing any food problem. We are facing only the administrative problem. India is producing enough because of administrative lapses and we are not able to distribute the food production. We are not able to tune how the production is there. This problem is being created. Our lifestyle is created all this problem. Otherwise, India, there is no depth of food production. There is no depth of animal or mineral nutrition. You eat your traditional food, you will never you will never get uh, sugar. In the last one month, how many times you have taken uh, bitter guard? You tell me. How many times you have taken bitter bar? How many times you have taken uh, palak bhaji? Have you taken? No. Not yes or no? no. Simple, you tell. No. So how many times you have taken uh, uh, this uh, banana stem? Have you eaten banana stem? The pseudo stem? Have you eaten banana flower? No. So there are two tastes we are totally omitting. One is bitter, another is uh, what do you call it? So, if we are not at all taking, how your body will get balanced? It is lifestyle problem. 
it is not the production problem got it we take more chicken we take uh, more sweets like this we'll take so two one of the two taste we are totally omitting so our body is the balance of all this taste you have to balance it so your food item should have all it is not one food production all either you can import you can save the water that is how now government is thinking because water is shortage in the coming days it is not going to be the same game forever so you have to produce more with less water second your land will come down so you have to produce you have to diversify government no more wanted to give 60000 crores of rupees per nitrogen subsidy and go for rice you diversify the three options are there and fourth option simple you you go with your traditional food style without compromising anything no compromise you can still we are food secure country never in the covid have you faced any food crisis no during 1943 did we face a food crisis people say it was a bengal famine because of uh, what is that almindos podium is it not brown spot it is wrong it was wrong at that time you go to the british record they say they have traded for 52 lakhs 52 lakh rupees trading was happened between india and england for a fine grain rice from bihar and ap it is not bengal famine it is a human crisis it's a economic problem india was never at crisis we have enough to produce we have enough land only thing is how we manage the economy that is the problem so our population is stable it is not highly volatile what we required is only something around uh, 200 million tons is required we are producing something around 300 million tons 100 million we can go for export next month you produce who you are bother is it not so people calculate at the end of the year so it is not required i need only 6 month so you eat it food this 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 month the next month you have a store and after third month if your crop is ready what is your problem if your government is efficient if your system is efficient after third month you will produce and eat i i told the story of this island what the fellow told allow the fish to go tomorrow it will come so if you are so much confident on the nature we will survive because in the earth human population will never get wiped out because it has been stable and stabilized only thing is we have to understand the food crisis only diversification has to be there and your food style has to be changed you will address the malnutrition and other thing another thing is you have to give access to the food that is something about economics out of our purview access to food though you have enough people doesn't have a job people doesn't have a working opportunity so they don't get money so they don't get the access to the food otherwise food is there it is called physical in access clear so that is what government policies everything is working how we will remove this physical in access to the food system otherwise we are enough we are comfortable our agriculture is better i can say we are far better than many countries any other question ah uh, yeah you have some question yes 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 good evening sir so i have no age to price what you have said but i have little doubts so you said that we have to concentrate on the micro uh, climate zone so that uh, we can practically utilize in the field level like that so whatever we have achieved in the uh, lab level it's not been in the practical issues for example for uh, the control of oil spills there is a super bugs but it is not been practically applicable for the sea level when these oil spill happens so what is your view point on that sir you're right um for solving a problem of uh, sea oil spill directly you cannot take a bacteria at uh, which can decompose this uh, carbon material directly it is not possible because you will understand for microbes to grow people will say so many things as a microbiologist if you see it has to build its own body is it not so to build a body it doesn't require not only carbon it requires nitrogen so for any living system there is a cn ratio so this you cannot violate whether it is a microbes it has its own biological or living cn ratio you take a tree it has its own cn ratio so without adding nitrogen you cannot make a microbes to grow only by carbon you cannot do it so you need a media so what if people will do for oil spill first you have to spray nitrogen 
some nitrogen source you have to spray. Along with this, you have to spray the microbes, then it will multiply, then it will clear. That is one technique people use it. So without nitrogen, you cannot make the microbes to grow. With carbon alone, you cannot do it. Okay, so microbe records nitrogen and other material. Second technique is there is a uh, accumulator, absorbent. It is called a physical absorbent, like uh, sugar cane thrash. You will wonder, sugar cane crust that I felt uh, I was not discussing, coconut husk, then sugar cane uh, bogase, and uh, some other fiber material like uh, what is called a cactus. Cactus, when you grow, there are some certain species are there they will have this one and another important is one of the bamboo so all this crust fiber they have a very good physical property as an absorbent absorbent physical absorb not absorption absorption ad okay so this physical absorption material you have to spray on this area so it will absorb it you collect it then you bring it then you spray nitrogen then you use the bacteria it will be effective otherwise directly you cannot do with microbes alone because that has to be saline tolerant that need nitrogen source also. That is why it is not uh, widely not successful. So some physical method like using absorption is much more uh, successful than uh, using a microbial. Otherwise, this oil spill and all, when you have a, in your house or in a factory, if you have oil spill, unknown area where you cannot enter into the system, where radiation is there, there you can use this microbial spray will be there. There is a pipe. So in that pipe, they will put the microbial decomposers into the system. It will go around the wall. It will spray. Then it will decompose. It will wipe out where you cannot enter. Okay. Otherwise, um, oil spill clearing is uh, still it's a, one of the researchable area you can work. Oil spill clearing, increasing the oil area. Similarly, coastal area. We were discussing on coastal salinity, coastal water rugged condition. So where there is a water lagging, no need for any amendment. You go for land shaping. It is called land shaping technique. One of the wonderful area of research for a land manager, not soil scientist, a land manager. So you have to make into different farm. You know, farm pond, if you put a farm pond, water level is limited. You cannot grow anything, but change the shape. Maybe your university people will say it is the subject of agriculture engineering. Whether it is agriculture engineer or not, farmers want a solution. You have a shape, different size, different slope based on your clay content and the silt content. So based on this, your slope will be decided. Engineer won't do. Engineer will cut three into four size. But the soil science will decide what is the slope of my this one. So if your clay is more, you can have one is to one slope. If your silt is more, one to 1.5 slope has to be given in the pond. You built it. I have built around 500 ponds in Ender and the mud. Still it is there. You can see in Google also. Even after 10 years, it is there. Under NIP, we have constructed because we have designed the pond based on your soil composition. So this you can design, raise the area. You have waterlogged area, cut the soil and replace it as a bund. Harvest the water, leach the salt, then dry it out. Now your pond is micro environment is ready for cultivation. So inside you will have a fresh water, outside you have a saline water. So in the bund you go for agriculture. So if you put the ratio, it will be one third and two third. So two third will be the water, one third will be the agricultural area. Otherwise, the entire area was under waterlogged condition. So you have a fish, you have a, a polyculture of uh, crops, you can grow on the bun. Throughout, uh, throughout the uh, year, you can grow at least two crop or three crop. So this is how we have to think, this is called a land shaping method for saline and water like areas, alternate way of cultivation. This is also one of the very good area of research for coastal and water like areas. Okay, I take this opportunity to thank uh, uh, Dr. Senthil, Dr. Bala Subramaniam, Madam, and all my friends and all my friends. Thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to interact with you. Good luck. Thank you, sir, for taking the time to share your life experience and valuable expertise in NRM. I'm happy to hear uh, the lecture of our ADG. Thank you very much, sir. The lecture was very much useful for our students also, our scientists. I deem it a great honor to invite our respected Dr. R. Shanti Mam, Professor and Head, Department of Soil Science and Agricultural Chemistry, to propose the vote of thanks. Good evening, one and all present here. And in fact, it was a very live and enlightening session today. Uh, even we did not know uh, the the timings. So the, uh, the, uh, the <coughs> extempore uh, talk given by our chief guests. So coming to the formal vote of thanks, 
So let first let us uh, thank on behalf of Dean School of Postgraduate Studies and Coimbatore Chapter Indian Society of Soil Science, Department of Soil Science and Agriculture Chemistry, Directorate of Natural Resource Management, wholeheartedly our respected Vice Chancellor for having permitted us and having a chance to or organize this lecture. And I thank wholeheartedly our Dean SPGS. In fact, I when myself and our director NRM met him with our uh, Dr. Vadivelu sir during the Endowman lecture uh, uh, while we are discussing, he spontaneously told, Madam, I have invited our ADG as a chief guest for the National Science Day. Make use of him. That is the word he has put. Then immediately I have planned and uh, I start interacting with our chief guests. Then with the help of our director NRM, we made it to happen today. So that is the background of it. And in fact, I met our uh, chief guest uh, twice in the recent past. One during December to 7 to 9 during the Fertilizer Association of India, the seminar, the annual seminar. So first meeting after 30 years. I think he left the campus in 92. So I met him in 2022. So when he was uh, talking over phone, he he told Madam how you will identify in the seminar. Then he immediately came in the WhatsApp and I know his face, uh, I could uh, recollect. Then it was a big gathering in the inaugural, about more than 1,200 delegates, mostly men with less of women. So even then he was sitting in a back row and just immediately as soon as he entered, leaving his uh, DDG to the dais, he just called me. Then we were uh, in the inaugural for about two hours. So during that time also in between, he started talking about uh, our analytical chemistry and instrumentation, what he spoke today. And the second meet was again happened uh, during February 9th, where we were uh, the expert members in the Department of Fertilizers. And we had a very uh, small time to discuss. And then as soon as I arrived, our dean told this uh, good news. Actually, I'm thankful to Dr. Sentil, our dean uh, uh, School of Postgraduate Studies, having brought our ADG here. So that is the thing. So give a, let us give you a whole heartily a big hand to, for this event to happen. So actually, this is a sensitization and motivation session, I can say. And in the morning also, he spoke uh, because always the talk should be according to the focus of the audience. So morning he, he has come to the level of school students. And again, he gave an extempo speech in the morning according to students level. And now as a, a formal protocol and uh, holding a highest position in ICAR also as ADG soil and water management, he has thrown a lot of insight and top provoking ideas. And for the information of both the Dean and Director, after the session, again, nearing the lunch time, he visited a soil science department. Again, immediately after lunch, almost all the laboratories of soil science and the instrumentation facility were exposed. And we took them to our water soluble unit also. And uh, uh, he had very good interaction. Then and then there, he has interacted with the scientists and also he has interacted in the PG and PhD lab with the students also. He has given a lot of ideas then and there also. So my on behalf of the Department of Soil Science and Agriculture Chemistry and on, own my, and on my own behalf, a request to ADG is please link us with the externally funded schemes wherever possible. So we have a potentiality, we have all the resources, and in different fields, we have our eminent scientists. So definitely, we hope wherever possible, uh, you can very well link uh, our uh, TNAU Soil Science Department as well as because uh, not only in uh, Coimbatore, uh, about 68 soil scientists are working in different places throughout TNAU, in different campuses, in research stations and KVKs and doing their services. So any even network project very well we can have throughout Tamil Nadu under the leadership of our director NRM. So this uh, I, I would like to make, it up, uh, make a request to ADG because apart from of course we have all the three All India Coordinated Research Projects which you have interacted in the morning. 
the STCR, micronutrients, long-term fertilizer, both STCR and micronutrients are started in the year 1967 as soon as the project was launched by Dr. Ramamurthy for STCR. And again, Letty FE in 1972. In microbiology also, we have the network project on biofertilizer. And in Trichy, we have the salt-affected soil. So all the coordinated projects are housed here. And, and very well, I can very confidently tell here, in all the ICREP workshops and in group meetings, whenever we go, especially in STCR, the um, the uh, expert reviewing expert or rather our coordinator will ask the center in charge TNAU to present first as a scheme in charge for about nine years in the SSR project I had an opportunity to present the number one in any uh, uh, the VIP Dr. N. N. Goswami used to be an external expert in many of the workshops I think you know to what extent he will go in data and the interpretation. So he was also one of the committee members during our QRT and he visited our uh, department and he visited our long-term experiments also. So like that, this is to uh, just appraise you the uh, the status of the ICREP output here. And apart from that, I told as I told you already, we had a mapping project also for 11 districts and uh, under my leadership and along with all the three ICRI projects. Apart from that, we now our scientists and students started working on many new 10 products, new 10 products, and we are commercializing it. And we have a new 10 repository center. That's why I thought of uh, taking you to there also, but uh, want of time, I couldn't make it. Almost about 38 products across TNAU we have documented, like our culture repository. This is the first, first kind that we have uh, started in the department itself in our UG teaching wing. So these are all our strength. So please uh, um, uh, link us with uh, the externally funded projects, whatever possible in the near future. So with this, I wholeheartedly thank uh, Dr. A. Vail Murugan, our ADG Soil and Water Management for having accepted our invitation and having given consent to spend uh, this valuable time for about two hours here for this interactive session alone. So we thank you profusely on behalf of Dean School Postgraduate Studies and our uh, department. And I thank our uh, Dean School of Postgraduate Studies and Dr. CPMB and B for uh, having uh, given us this chance to and also for uh, providing us with a very excellent online academy hall for uh, this event to happen. And our director, even though he was in Bhavani Sagar in the morning, he started just uh, calling me and uh, asked about the uh, progress of uh, the visit and all by the ADG and what I am doing like that. So thank you for your support and uh, guidance. And I thank all my faculty who has come along with me and uh, in the arrangements because in this uh, February itself, we made uh, two uh, important lectures. One, uh, one lecture given by Dr. S. Vadivelu, our uh, alumnus. Now he is currently consultant Karnataka Remote Sensing Application Center. He worked in Andaman. He worked in Andaman uh, and Lakshadip. So he, he came over here on 10th. So all my faculty has helped uh, uh, to arrange this lecture. And moreover, our student friends. So they also helped in arrangements as well as their participation in full strength. So as a whole, we thank one and all here for who are, and also all the supporting staff who has made this event to happen. So thank you one and all. Thank you very much.